Greetings and welcome to No BS Baking. My name is JP. This, this channel's objective is to do one thing, and that is, is really to clear up some of the misinformation, false information, and lack of information that's associated with many of the baking videos that I've, that I've seen out there. Now, I wanna give a little bit of baking science in layman's terms for everybody, and I'm gonna be giving you some really good tips on how to see through some of the potential misinformation, already understand what's missing out of the video, and, become, and ultimately just become a better baker at the end of the day. So, welcome to the channel. Without further ado, let's get at it. So you found this great recipe online and you followed it to a T and oh my God, you just got a big, huge, sticky mess once you dumped it out of the mixer bowl. What the heck is going on here? So in this scenario here, you followed this recipe exact and it was a big lump of rock hard dough. Oh my Lord, what could be wrong here? Well, probably nothing except that your flour is not the same. If you followed the recipe exact and you got a totally different consistency of dough than what they have, then I would automatically assume that this is the flour. Every flour is different, even if you're using a high protein bread flour and they're using high protein bread flour, different brands, different flour, different aging processes, different protein levels, all of this stuff comes into play. Whether it's an all-purpose and it's bleached or it's unbleached, it can make a huge difference in your flour. So if you want to make really good bread all the time, I'm going to give you some guidelines that's going to help you sort all of this stuff out and then allow you to work on building up your recipe uh, based on the type of ingredients that you are using. So if you're not sure of your flour or you're not feeling comfortable with the recipe, start with a lower hydration and then build your bread and your formulation for the next round that you do from there. The standard hydration range for most breads is usually between around 55 and 65 or maybe a little bit more on the 67 or whatever. As you start moving past that point, you start getting up into the high hydration doughs. Now, the only real difference between a standard hydration dough and a high hydration dough is generally the characteristics that you get at the end of the day. You get your large open, open crumb, you know, you the holes, you know, this is really desirable and sourdough and, and uh, certain artisan style breads. Um, but also as you move into the high hydration, you're also dealing with a lot more things such as a whole different processing method. There's no real uh, kneading uh, per se as, as we have down here at the standard hydration range. It's a lot more folding and it's a different process. We can get into that in another time, but 60% will work for most any type of standard bread dough uh, or bun dough. It's a great place to start and it works with almost every single flour. Now, however, if you're using, like we have over here, um, a lot of all-purpose bleached flour, which means that it's conditioned, or you see that you have some conditioning inside your all-purpose flour, then I would recommend, for safety reasons, drop it down maybe even a little bit more. So maybe go to about 58. So you're in between that 58 and 60, but if you're using a high protein bread flour or a proper bread flour, 60% will do the trip for you for sure. No matter what flour that you're using, if you're making bread or rolls, uh, make sure that you develop your gluten properly in your mixer. Mix it properly and get it to full development. 
You know the window pane test. You pull it out, you stretch out that little piece of dough, you look for a little bit of light that you can see through it. Very important, I can't stress it enough, and absolutely critical in the no-time dough process. So some standard rules of thumb here for a, a white flour bread recipe or bun recipe or whatever. Water or any type of combination of major liquids, 60% is a good starting point. Now if you're comfortable, and as I mentioned before, you're, if you, you, you've baked with your flour before, you know what it does, and you, you're comfortable putting in more water, go for it. But if you're not, and you want to have something that turns out as a decent loaf of bread at the end of the day, then start at 60% and build your recipe from there. Salt, 2%, standard yeast, dried yeast, of course, around 1% to 1.25%, standard. Mix time for white bread, generally one minute low speed, just to kind of bring all the ingredients together. And then about eight to 10 minutes of high speed. Now, if you're dealing with an all-purpose flour, you may find that eight minutes will be enough. Uh, you're using a high protein bread flour. You might see, you, you might need that 10 minutes and you might even need an extra minute or two. It, it just depends on how strong your flour is. But this is a basic guideline. Whatever your mix time ends up being uh, on this dough, your dough temperature needs to be around 76 degrees. Now I know, I know, they usually say a range of around 76 to 78. I prefer a little bit on the cooler side, um, especially in the cases of no time dough where you have a, uh, quite a bit of yeast in there. Um, I like to go a little bit cooler. It really, really helps in your uh, further processing as you uh, start rolling it and shaping it for your pan. You don't have this dough that's beginning to age and, and start to happen and get puffy and everything for you. You can roll it into a beautiful little cylindrical uh, piece of dough and works fantastic. So cool dough temperatures, 76 degrees is a really good target. Final proofing. Now, optimum relative humidity is about 80 to 85 percent. Now, in your kitchen, you you, you don't have a you know a, something to probably measure that you know some type of humidity gauge or whatever, a wet and dry bulb as we call them in the baking industry. But the idea is not to let your dough dry out on top. Okay, you want your dough to be tacky when it comes out of the proof box or up or at finished proofing. You put your fingers on it and it sticks a little bit to your finger, but not wickedly sticky. Just a little bit tacky on the top. Dry skin on the top of your bread leads to nothing really but discoloration after baking and really just kind of steals away from the sexiness of your loaf uh, visual appeal at the end of the day. Now any additional items that you might have in your formula such as sugar, oil, shortening eggs, whatever they are that you got in there, just add them as per your recipe, keeping in mind that 60% on your major liquids is where you're going to start with and you're going to bake a nice loaf of bread visually appealing bread size matters being that there is literally a hundred different styles and types and manufacturers of bread baking pans uh, the chances are very slim that the pans that you have in your kitchen are the same as the pans that your neighbor has in his kitchen and or that the video where you got this recipe from the pans that they have in their kitchen so you can see that there's a lot of variation. You could have doing the exact same thing. You could be putting your, your dough into your particular type of pan. And ultimately at the end of the day, it's not delivering the proud and proper performance that you would expect um, out of that loaf of bread. And it could be just literally as simple as your pan size in conjunction with your scaling weight. So. I'm going to be talking a little bit about this as we move forward here. One of the things I notice with a lot of the videos out there is they don't talk enough about scaling weights. Now, 
Scaling weights are critically important. As an example, you can have too little dough inside a pan and you wonder why your loaf of bread isn't turning out the way it should. You want to get it a little bit bigger so you let it proof a little bit longer and then it just falls and collapses and turns into a pancake. You know, this, the container size for proofing, whether it's a pan, as in these uh, instances that I'm showing here, or it's some type of a proofing basket, everything has to be calculated based on the amount or weight of the dough that you are putting into that container. So in this little example, you can see that I've, you know, if you've got too little dough and your dough lays out into the bottom of the pan like this, you're expecting a lot from that little piece of dough. And so by the time you proof it, maybe you get it up to around this size. By the time you go and bake it, what do you got? You got a hockey puck in there that's probably flat at the top, maybe even collapsed a little bit. Thus, you have the on the other side. So you've got too big of a piece of dough and you look around your kitchen and you've got this small one pound loaf pan, but you scaled out your dough to a much heavier of a weight. And you've got a couple of options. In this option, it's not so bad because you can pull your dough earlier and bake it off earlier. So the ultimate worst situation that's going to happen there is that you're going to have a really dense product with a real dense crumb and very doughy and, and you know, heavy, heavy kind of a bread. So on the too much side, you can see that after you proof it, you know, by the time you've re that dough weight has reached its optimum proof time for this size of pan, you bake it off and now you've got this ginormous loaf. Ideally, you need to have the right amount of dough so that your product proofs up nice and so at the end of the day when you bake it, uh, it bakes out to a perfect size. Now, I'm not going to go and just beat this to death because um, I have another video coming up on the importance of scaling weights uh, as, it, as it pertains to the type of pan sizes or proofing baskets that you're using. Uh, it's very important that you get this kind of sorted out. Uh, as I showed you in the previous example, too little dough or too much dough inside the wrong size pan can have detrimental effects on the uh, quality of the product at the end of the day. I don't see enough people talking about this. I don't even hear them even really talking about scaling weights. They kind of just, well, we made this dough and now you cut it in half and you stick it into the, your basket and then away you go. Well, what size basket? How much dough are you putting in there? All of these types of things make a big difference because if you screw up and you just happen to not have the exact same size uh, um, a proofing basket or pan that they're using, I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out what's going to happen. So anyway, we're going to cover this off. But once again, we're I'm trying to show you how to make a beautiful loaf of bread as quickly and easily as possible. And scaling weights versus pan sizes, very important. So with everything we've covered off in this video, you can be sure to enjoy success every time. I mean, you're going to get a decent loaf of bread out of it. The biggest problem is, as many people try to go uh, more to these more difficult uh, style doughs, these higher hydration, they can't handle them. They're uh, sticky all over the place and are throwing too much flour into it. And that's where you have your problem. If you want to have success in baking trust me on the 60 percent water you can make tons of different types of products as i'm showing here uh, even sourdough and um, you're going to have a way easier of a time so the whole idea behind this uh, video here is to lead up to uh, a segment i'm doing on no time doughs and uh, ultimately, to help you make any style of bread quick and easy.
Thank you for watching the video. I apologize if it seemed like I droned on and on and on. My God, like 15, 20 minutes rolled by and I only got like kind of three tips done. But I'm trying to be as, uh, explain things as best that I can. And you'll have to bear with me as I work on getting rid of my ums and ahs and you knows and stuff like that. But I'm expecting that it'll get better as I move forward. Uh, I'm going to be launching a few more extra videos, a little bit more uh, technical in some of them. Any of them that you're interested in, uh, if you'd like, I have a complete uh, presentation recap which has all the charts and graphs and these types of things and some uh, text information to support all of the uh, uh, information that I am presenting. And so if you're interested in that, they'd be great. I'll be doing them for every of all of the technical videos that I do. Uh, and so you're welcome to that. So anyway, next time, check out one of my next videos and uh, let's see how that goes.